guys, what's up? Murder of Bird Tale. Welcome back to the channel. So we are back to consistency. We are back to weekly uploads, and we are finally here with the last batch of episodes for my reactions of season 11 for the chorus trilogy of Red vs. Blue. This is going to be my reaction batch to episode 16, 17, 18, and 19, if I'm not mistaken. This is a hefty one. It's 30 minutes of watch time. So Lord knows how much I'm going to talk about uh, this batch after the fact. But uh, I just want to say thank you very much to everyone who has been holding tight for me getting back to Red vs. Blue following uh, Project Freelancer. And from whenever you guys discovered my channel to now, uh, we are going to be continuing the Chorus Trilogy until I finish Season 13 week in and week out. So following this reaction, I will, of course, uncomfortable my thoughts on season 11 as a whole in the review similar to what I've done to previous seasons and then season 12 will pick up where where things left off from there so um, I, I just want to say thank you guys so much for the support you guys have shown uh, in the YouTube comments uh, on patreon for people who are early access as early as one week and even two week early access I greatly appreciate uh, your support and input and feedback as well and uh, I'm really stoked and excited. The last batch left a lot to be um, expected for this last one, especially with how Felix is kind of with the Reds and Blues now. So I feel like he's going to be the gateway to a lot of new information and setup and just things that I can ponder between uh, this batch, the review, and the next batch for, for season 12. Uh, but before we jump into the episode, there is one little bit of housekeeping and a personal request that I want to have and that I want to showcase and share to you guys and see if you guys can help me in a call to action of sorts because by the time you guys are seeing this, it's already going to be like a couple of weeks because I'm sitting down to record this a couple of days before it goes up on Patreon. So I wanted to give a big shout out and a humble mention to the writer of season 11 12 and 13 of red versus blue the chorus trilogy uh to miles luna uh finally i can say that because uh for those of you who don't know i got first introduced to miles uh within the community through ruby it's what got me into the rooster teeth community back in 2013 uh when he was writing the show alongside carrie and monty but I didn't know at the time until like a couple of years later that he also had a bigger involvement with the company through Red vs. Blue, being a fan, doing some of the mini series writings, uh, you know, and being supervised by Bernie and then taking the helm of writing after season 10 with the chorus trilogy. Now, I did this similarly with Bernie when I finished season 10 of Red vs. Blue. Like I tweeted at him and I just, you know, gave him my, I guess like my fan seal of approval of the fact of like that I loved the 10 years of writing that he did for RVB, that I didn't know that I'd love it as much as I did by the time I finished it, that it was incredible. And I just loved the body of work that he left behind and that he produced with his buddies back in the day. And uh, one of the first actual conversations I had with my Miles was a result of the growth and the support that my channel had because of him. Uh, a lot of people probably already know about this, but for those who don't, back in, so I started my channel in 2013, and one of the first things that I covered on my channel was Ruby Volume 1. I did reviews for Volume 1 and for Volume 2 in 2013 and 2014, respectively. And then in 2015, uh, 2016, I got into Ruby Volume 3 with reactions. I still did reviews, but that was the first time I incorporated reacting to Ruby on my channel. And Miles Luna and Barbara Dunkelman, and to this day, I will still be the first one to say it, without their outcry of support, you know, without Rooster Teeth being, you know, very community focused and community driven, uh, Miles and Barbara did so much for me with shouting me out on Twitter and letting people know about my channel through like their live streams. And I even got like a shout out in the volume three Blu-ray DVD commentaries. Um, what they did for me in 2016 still continues to reverberate off of like everything that I've done since then. Um, that was the turning point for my channel. That's where it went from being something casual to something that I do full time now. And one of the first conversations I ever had with Miles was when I first met him when I visited Rooster Teeth in 2016 for my first ever RTX that the community helped fund uh, for a GoFundMe that I did that year as well. And uh, one of the first conversations I had with Miles was like, you know, talking about Red versus Blue, because at the time I was on season three and he had told me that he had done season 11. 
And one of the things that he also mentioned was when he took over writing for Bernie, he got a lot of shit from the community because, you know, he's the new kid on the block. He's writing a new season that was kind of different thematically from where season 10 was. And now that I've seen season 10 and I'm about to finish season 11, I get what he's talking about. But like, I like that was like one of the first conversations we had about his process of like writing for a show that he had watched for so long and being a part of that and being able to like leave his mark on the community and believe in the thing that he was doing regardless of the fact that people were like fighting him tooth and nail especially the community about like his process and his way of doing things which i think in hindsight um i think it, it worked out because I, I i've heard nothing but great things that people have uh told me about with the chorus trilogy in particular so I tweeted at him yesterday and I was like, hey, I just want to let you know that I'm about to finish season 11 of RVB. And I just like my favorite thing about this season. And I'm going to talk very heavily about my my likes, not dislikes, but like my personal critiques of this vault of, of this season in particular, um, based on especially my my preconceived like expectations going into it. I'm going to talk more about that in the review. Of course, I'm not going to like ramble about all of my thoughts of the season. But like one of the things that I thought that I would be lost in was the drama, was the action, was the personalized story that Project Freelancer gave us with Alpha, with, uh, you know, Carolina, with uh, Allison, with the director, and with the freelancers. And I thought I'd get lost in the sauce of all that drama. And I love that Miles took us back to what got us into the show in the first place. It was refined for sure because these characters have been with us for the last 10 seasons, but I loved more that like I absolutely love the fact that rather than one up Project Freelancer, he decided to take it back to its roots um in a new way. And it, now it's ramping up, especially the last batch that I watched, it's ramping up. I absolutely love it. I can't wait to see what evolves from this with 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 I don't know if Caron's going to be mentioned. I don't know if Malcolm Hargrove's going to come back to the picture, but like we have uh we have Locus, we have Felix, we have like the Reds and Blues. Um obviously Carolina and Epsilon are probably going to come back into the fold um next season based on the fact that this season was focused on the Reds and Blues primarily. But there's a lot of setup, there's a lot of mystery, there's a lot of intrigue that is getting me hooked and is getting my attention and my hype really excited and really up there with with things that I want to look forward to with the show. So I told Miles that and uh, he responded with, you know, the fact that, you know, he obviously thanked me for the kind words and he told me that at the time he got a lot of shit. He got a lot of harsh, negative, rude feedback, feedback um, because it wasn't Project Freelancer, essentially, because it wasn't focused on what season 10 had just given people. It, it took them back to something that they didn't have in a while. And some people probably didn't want that. Some people probably wanted more drama, more emotions, more trauma, all that other stuff. Yeah, I, I, I just wanted this call to action to be for any of you guys who do have a Twitter, um, either find the tweet that I tweeted to him or the tweet that he responded and quote retweeted, but just go on Twitter and say something awesome to him about like what, what some of your favorite moments of season 11 are, or how do you feel about season 11 in a whole, as a whole that you can put in one tweet. Um, just go over there and give him some love. Cause I, I feel it's very odd now in 2020. Like I was saying it to myself yesterday. I was like, who is really watching red versus blue? in 2020 that isn't a content creator who isn't a youtuber like someone who isn't doing reactions or isn't a viewer watching it for the first time through someone's reactions i really don't think many people are going back unless they are already like an established or previously established red versus blue fan or rooster teeth fan i don't really know if most people are getting into rvb now and i think maybe that's why rvb zero is maybe like a new beginning for the franchise to kind of get a new crowd into the mix that doesn't feel like it needs the baggage or the history or um the understanding of the last 17 seasons with a bunch of new cat with the with you know with the bunch of characters that we've grown to know and love just because it is a hard barrier to entry especially with 17 seasons so um yeah that's kind of what i wanted you guys to go do like i i love and appreciate miles so much the fact that he was not only writing rvb you know, the chorus trilogy, but co-writing Ruby and voicing characters in both shows. I don't know how the fuck he did it. Like I genuine, like he was John in Ruby volume one. He was Locus in season 11. He was writing season 11, probably starting season 12. And he was co-writing Ruby with Monty and Carrie at the time. And I'm just like, how the fuck did this guy, obviously he was way younger than he was then. So he probably had the energy 
to exude all of that, you know, time being stretched four different ways. I don't know how the fuck he did it, but that's incredibly impressive. And it it's definitely going to reflect in my opinions of this season as well, since it it worked out really well. I love the way that the season was set up. And like I said, it took a, it dialed things back a bit. And I think I needed that too, because I was kind of getting lost in the, you guys know, we've, we went through like hours of discussions and breakdowns and theories and speculations and analysis and emotions, uh, the last two seasons. So I like that this uh, this season has been like a, a very good change of pace for the most part, um, and the last batch in particular has is starting to elevate those uh, those expectations for me and a lot of the excitement for for a lot of things that I just don't know about yet. So the last batch was was really straightforward for the most part. I liked the emotional, heartfelt, wholesome moments between uh, Washington and Tucker, Washington and Caboose. Um, you know, him kind of just trying to break the ice with these guys because they've been having a, some rough patches since the start of the season you know with caboose uh losing epsilon with tucker also losing epsilon they both considered them him their friend and uh, he just kind of up and left with carolina and washington's doing the best that he can and i and i like that at the very least they, they they've reached an understanding you know what i mean like caboose is like okay wash you know you, you need to be the leader i appreciate the sentiment and um you know clearly things are a lot better with you running things and i feel like tucker is is slowly going to start coming into his own as a as a as a soldier and as a more competent character because he he does seem to have potential it just seems like for the most part he he reminds me kind of like of shikamaru and naruto uh for any naruto fans out there shikamaru was a character that was incredibly lazy like he was just like everything's a drag everything sucks everything like he would rather not waste his time or waste his energy doing something when he knows he could could do it and he was like considered like the best strategist of his class and he became like naruto's advisor and all that stuff when he became hokage so like it, it kind of reminds me of that like tucker i feel like he has so much untapped potential it's just he doesn't push himself to to achieve it and washington is helping him do that and i hope through washington's words and his actions and the fact that he is trying to look out for everyone i really hope that at the end of the day that that shines through for for, for Tucker moving forward, especially, because I don't know what craziness the Reds and Blues are going to get into this time. I don't know if the freelancers can just bail the Reds and Blues out constantly. Uh, maybe it's their turn to kind of return the favor, you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, that's kind of how I feel overall. Uh, I'm really looking forward... <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this exchange now because Locust just like attacked the Reds and Blues, I guess for confirmation. He's like, I'm going to take me and my four lackeys and we're going to fight them. And if they can take out my four lackeys, then they're the real deal. Even though Freckles did most of the work and Tucker, like I said, Tucker's leveling up. Tucker actually took out one of the soldiers himself. So again, that's another testament to the fact that Tucker, when he puts his mind to it, he can do whatever you know so felix got shot felix saved the reds and blues for the time being locus is probably stalking them right now and he's just like waiting to act or maybe he's going to go back to control and be like hey i have a situation i need help um but it seems like locus wants to kill the reds and blues while felix wants to protect them so i don't know if these are opposing factions if these are two different uh you know you know i, I don't i don't really know what to call them they're not free they don't seem to be freelancers i don't know if they're like mercenaries or anything like that but they seem to have two different ideologies at this point or they just have two different bases of operation that have different motives for what they want for the reds and blues like one thinks they're a threat one thinks they're an asset i don't really know um but felix is now with the reds and blues he's being tended by doc and i i really hope that felix gives us a lot of the information that we can look forward to for the next season who the fuck is locust who the hell is felix what's this planet what's going on why are they being targeted from you from locust like what's locust's faction all about who are those soldiers like I, I just really hope Locus um, Felix gives us some question uh, gives us some answers to the questions that I'm thinking about that I can like think on, especially going into the review, and hopefully um, that we can look forward to with season 12. And I really hope Epsilon and Carolina come back into the fold because that's something else that I'm going to talk about in the review because that's something that I was that I was expecting until like probably halfway through the season when I just felt like we weren't going to get it. Um, but yeah, those are all of my thoughts. Those are all of my opinions. But with that long-winded intro aside, I really do appreciate all of you guys. 
for your support over on Patreon, uh, for your kindness, your generosity, your support from everyone who's been watching these videos on Early Access. And an extra special thank you goes to those of you in the Wizard of Remnant tier and higher, that being Daniel Burns, Ezra Lee, Ian Dodd, Jamie Coleman, Juberski, Kiba Bodaway, Matthew Trapp, Michael, and Winter Schnee. Thank you guys so much for the support. Thank you for, you know, enjoying the reactions, for leaving your feedback for every week of videos that have been coming out. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoy the reaction. All right, guys, so we're going to be jumping into the finale batch of reactions for Red vs. Blue Season 11 uh, with episodes 16, 17, 18, and 19. So I hope you guys look forward to it. As always, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. And we're going to be starting this in three, two, one, now. All right, here we go. Yo, he's with the gang. Please, I just want information. If I just get new info, I'll be happy. Come on. There. Oh, duck. Good as new. Hey, that I orange juice toes. came in clutch. That's normal, is it? <laughs> I don't think so. Hey. Whoa. You need to start talking. All right, Wash, but relax. He just saved paranoid, you guys. And a little melodramatic. You must be Agent Washington. <laughs> Wait, melodramatic. he knows him. The rest of you oh, yeah. Are the reds and the blues. Damn, they're hella well known. We're wearing red and blue armor. <laughs> he can't see. Will somebody please fix his oh, helmet? Come on. How do you know who we are? Seriously? The UNSC, you guys come took on, Project man. Freelancer down. You guys. You're heroes. Heroes. Holy You're shit. The team that brought down Project Freelancer. Heroes some of the though? galaxy's greatest soldiers. <laughs> well, I can see how you might think that. No because way. It's absolutely true. It's partially true. Oh false. boy. Stop giving him information. What's your name? Felix. Felix. Okay. okay Felix. Official. What are you doing here? Do you want the long answer or the short one? Do you want another bullet in your leg? <laughs> that bullet's there because of you. Chill, dude. He just He's saved you guys. And that's true. <sighs> just... Just chill out, Wash. Explain what's going on. Uh, yeah. Please. Like, who are those guys that were trying to kill Yes. Us? And why haven't we been rescued? Please. Everything. Wait. Where do you think you are? What do you mean? I mean, do They're you an... understand where you've crashed? Well, we've been They're on a new planet. Last wager's currently on Bermuda Triangle. After that, we got Gilligan's <laughs> Island, Mercator, so Gilligan's stupid. Island. No, just think about it. It makes perfect sense. Uh, no. The reason no one's come to help you is the same reason no one's come to help them. Them? Who's the them? People on this planet. What planet? Chorus. Never heard of it. Oh my God! Well, Chorus I trilogy. You to. Chorus planet. On the very edge of colonized space, and after the war between the humans and the aliens was more or less forgotten. Master Chief blows USC. up the whole Covenant Armada. In the middle of nowhere, on a planet in the middle of nowhere. Fucking beautiful, yeah. everybody. <laughs> but how did we end up so far from home? Yeah. It have been a short flight. Sir, please. Oh please my god, here. it's everyone's it's full. Damn it, Point Dexter. No wonder this flight's taking so long. Who ever heard of delicate engines? These engines are supposed to be big. Oh Loud. my god. Let's kick this baby into space. <laughs> Jesus! Everyone's uh, at fault. One mystery at a time, there, Simmons. Now, being a small planet, completely free of UNSC jurisdiction, the nice oh. little people of Chorus decided to run things on their own. Okay. The problem was they didn't do a very good job. Ugh. History is the worst. So, really quick, point? hold on, let the me pause point? this. So, like, is this like a dog eat dog world planet? Like, they have no central government, right? Because he mentioned that, like, this is a, this is a colonized planet. That was under UNSC, UNSC jurisdiction, but then after, like, Master Chief blows up the whole Covenant Armada, and I'm stuck in a, bun in a canyon fighting a bunch of blue guys. Uh, so, like, after that, they just, like, forgot Chorus existed. So, like, not having the UNSC means you probably are limited on resources. You're limited on external resources. So, is that why it's, like, this ship crashes they have all of these resources on the ship and they have new people but they can't take in more people because they already have the people that they have to deal with having so i i wonder if that's the situation like if locus lives a survival of the fittest kind of life but Lo but felix is a bit more forgiving the point is you've crash landed in the middle of a civil war oh and i'm on the side that's trying to keep you alive and which oh. side is that the new republic Essentially, a bunch of people got fed up with the way things were oh, going on, Chorus, shit. so they put together a rebel army and decided to fight for their freedom. That makes it's a lot more sense. Patriotic. So what? Does that make those guys the evil empire or something? <laughs> yeah. Is that a Star Wars that. reference? Oh. oh, fuck. I've never but seen Star Wars. Boy tried to kidnap us. It's like I said, you're the greatest soldiers in the galaxy. No. That makes you, you a pretty You think hot they are. And I'd be lying if I said my shitty attempt at a rescue mission Wait. didn't have a few strings attached. What kind of strings are we talking here? <sighs> The rebels need your help. 
Once they okay. heard that you were on Chorus, they sent me out with a small team to find you and bring you back. Okay. They're hoping you might be the key to winning this war. Jesus Christ, the reds and blues. No. <laughs> Dude, they're getting yeah. wrapped up in no. another yeah, situation. That, that's not so for where me. the fuck did Carolina and Wash uh, and, and Epsilon go? If they're stuck on this planet like everyone else, eventually they're gonna have to realize that they're not where they thought they were. Right? That they that they're not back on their home like what planet were they on then? Were they on Earth? I, I have no clue. I like all of this interplanetary travel, I know Sidewinder was a different planet, but that's understandable because they warped there using the teleporters from season, like from the blood, like from Blood Gulch. So like that, like warped them to like different planets. But I never was under the impression that there were more than like the one planet that we were on. So like Epsilon and Carolina just like booked it thinking that they're going to like right the wrongs of Project Freelancer unless people on this planet have Project Freelancer tech, unless that ending is a bit retconned in that degree as well, because it just wouldn't make sense for them to just leave and be in a new environment and not know any of this shit. You know what I mean? So this is interesting too. So civil war between the New Republic and the the the, the current establishment of Chorus, which I assume that's the side that Locus is on. So they are on opposing factions. So to a degree, I was right about that. For me, look, Felix, I <clears> hate <throat> to break it to you. We are not the best. In no condition to fight a war. <laughs> True. All is a ride off the shitty planet. No offense. They just want to eh, get back to their lives. Aren't you one of the rebels? No, I'm a freelancer. What? No, I mean no. a mercenary. You know, a gun for hire. Oh, thank oh, God. Oh, wait, so he is a mercenary. To come find us. They pay me to do lots of stuff. I was about to say, he, yeah, he's not a state. paycheck. So you want us to go fight someone else's oh, war just so you can make some extra cash? They meant, like, a freelancer, like, someone who does work, like, of their own accord. Like, he's not hired by any... Sp I get it. It's just the word freelancer is so, like... Like, they all reacted immediately, like, the same way I did. I was like, wait a minute, he is a freelancer? Okay, let's back up a bit. Eh, it ain't my shitty planet. <laughs> Aren't you one of the rebels? Wait, it's... No, he's not... Oh no! I mean, I'm a mercenary. You know, a gun. Caboose is the only one oh, who didn't God. who didn't they attack him. They pay you to come find us. They pay me to do lots of stuff. But, oh, yeah, so he's a gun for picture. hire. So you want us to go fight someone else's war just so you, you can, can get paid? Interesting. Uh, I wonder if Locus is in the same cause? boat. Right. Are they both we'll just mercs? Take that ride out of here, if you don't mind. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought about. this was his fight too. Woohoo! Here's to not going that extra mile. You know, I wasn't alone when I came out here to find you. Oh. There were three of us. Just think about that. Yikes. Whatever. It's not like we asked them to save us. Yeah, we definitely didn't build a giant radio tower to send us a stress <laughs> signal or anything. Shut True. Up. Got him. Headquarters, this is Felix. I've made contact with the Reds and Oh, Blues. shit. Holy shit, you found them? Whoa! That's great. Uh, what's your status? No. Is that Carrie? Good. We ran into some feds. I need an evac team. Damn it. Uh, Felix, I can't just fly somebody out there. Yeah, I know. Okay, Damn. you send as many men as you can as fast as you can. Locus has our position. Shit. Oh, no. Who's Locus? No, I want to do this quietly. The guy who just came right. at you. But just to be safe, bring a shitload of guns. Right. <laughs> Any reinforcements, sir? Okay, right. here we go. Felix out. Dude, that freaking command no. sound is so nostalgic for now like Vic. We work on making this canyon the most defendable hole in the ground the universe has ever seen. Fuck. Why? Because we're about to get You're about to get wrecked hard. by Locust when he comes back with his boys. The supplies you've got on hand. Let's set up choke points and mark potential sniper's nest. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, he's calling the shots now? We're not telling you anything. We still don't even know if we can believe you. Well, believe this. If we don't prepare for a fight, you're going to die. Might as we'll just be waiting for a massacre. Shit. Also, I can't hear Miles at uh, all in Felix. It's crazy. Jump. Yes, who said that? Sorry, you and the Reds. <laughs> Someone help Caboose. If we can use it as a weapon. Let's get it prepped. Yo, yeah, let's go! Everyone's working together. Felix, you and I aren't done talking. Hell yeah. Well, all right then. Freelancer? See if you guys are as good as they say. It's a freelancer. Prepare to be sorely disappointed. Yeah, true. <laughs> I was waiting for someone to say that, man. Like, they got all of the credit for stopping project freelancer because like project freelancer is so like renowned right they have ai they have scientific enhancements augmentations armor abilities like a lot of the assets of of, of the unsc they had the freelance like 50 freelancers right all under like 
So to the UNSC, they probably think the Reds and Blues just bodied everything that that Project Freelancer had. When at the end of the day, it was just the director that they took care of, and that wasn't even the Reds and Blues. That was really Carolina and and Epsilon's and Epsilon's battle that that really caused him to to to, to put an end to everything he was doing. So this is like I think their biggest challenge yet because they have never ever ever had to like be involved in something this big it's always been within the confines of project freelancer but now civil war on a foreign planet that they just got wrapped into along with some mercs and i i'm pretty sure locust is a mercenary too but i'm not entirely sure um but yeah so like we don't even know whose like planet this is and who's like who's actually fighting for this civil war this guy just got hired to help them out so that's really interesting. I'm glad at the very least now I know a bit of, I have a bit of perspective now. So now I can kind of unfold things as we go along. I love how Griff was the first to be like, you're going to be disappointed as fuck. It's a good right, thing that boys. Wash has been don't training them this whole time. <clears throat> like, like Hello, Tucker everyone. and Don't Frank and Caboose. Great to be back. Wrap it up. Good to be back. <laughs> Nobody cares. I'm back. All right, just shut up and listen. We had a full armory on board the ship consisting of firearms as well as explosives. Hmm. I moved as many as I could down here and also took the liberty of setting up a minefield near Red <coughs> Oh my god. But didn't even bury them. From what I could tell, they're designed to rest above the ground. Uh, with blinking red warning lights? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really make any sense. In Excellent work, sir. True. Go work Excellent work. Yes, sir. Y'all are fucked. Griff, Doc, how are those teleportation tests going? Ooh. Well, we the cubes can be set to different frequencies. Gonna start example, using them? if I throw a cube set to frequency A, it will absorb an object. Okay. Frequency if I then B. Throw a second cube on frequency A, that object will reappear. All right. I mean, we already understand that. Meanwhile, if I've got a cube set to B, I can throw it like so. Yeah. Hey, wait. Whoa. Where did he go? Throw a second cube set to B without ever messing with the stuff sucked up by the cube set to A. Whoa. Mm. Well, all they do is teleport. Where the hell did Doc go? No violence? Nah. Well, we maybe can make them absorb grenades. And then we can throw the grenade-filled cubes at the enemy. At that point, we just kind of pog. To grenades. We're that too. Well, it's the enemy's it's grenades, it's not your grenades. Take donut and go find a way to make your stupid. Where's Doc? <sighs> Fine. And finally, we excuse, have no excuse me. Stop standing next to each other. I can never tell you two apart. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you <laughs> I need you two to get to work on repairing CC's fuel tanks. CC, okay, so what CC Cyclops? God damn it. Triumphantly leading the charge on the front I really line. think her and uh Freckles are gonna duke it out. <laughs> that will be your blood. Yeah. This is a terrible idea. Oh, gracias, adios. <laughs> nope, Solo not the way you think. I just wait. <laughs> robot with a job as important as this. <laughs> Come on. Change your plans. You two go prep the workstation, then wait for me to arrive and do the job myself. Jesus. Go I feel like well Lopez Dose.0 is just going to betray everybody. Es He's going to be like, fuck this, I'm out of here. They're locos. all insane. See, he realizes it. <laughs> Oye, Thank stop. you. Where's Doc? <laughs> They just yeeted right, this man that. to like another no, dimension. Okay, Open your eyes. Oh my god, the graphics hey, are Hey, they incredible. fixed him. You're welcome. Ah, oh. oh, <laughs> they fixed Tucker. his helmet. Ah. Uh, you know, you you and I have had our differences in the past. Ah, uh, you the music. You, stupid. you have called me stupid. I have tried to kill you. Uh-huh. <laughs> I but killed Church. Know, at the end of the day, I like to think that you and I are actually. <laughs> what? What? I can barely hear Wait, you. did his, his helmet speaker go out? Your visor somehow broke your radio. Oh my god, he was about to get really Just sentimental and emotional. Come on. Can't ruin that. So how bad is this? The man coming for us is named Locus. Okay. He's a merc like me. Okay. Only, you know. Worse. Terrifying. <laughs> Locus? Yeah. Guy's so far off the deep end, he prefers to go by the name of his armor instead of the name he was born with. Whoa. <laughs> That's unsettling. Locus armor. Oh, first name agent, last name Washington? That's so uh, His weird. first name's David, just... okay? Old habits. Damn. Yeah, well, here's to hoping those old habits of yours kick in when he shows up. I don't know, I man. More of you. This is gonna be great. Well, there... Another freelancer? It kind of was, AI. yeah. They disappeared not long after we crashed. Sheesh. Any idea where they went? Nope. No. 
I hmm. like where could they have well, gone? They're on a new planet. Better, I haven't heard anything about them over the radio, so um. They're kind of MIA right, right now. How was he able to cloak himself? Hmm? Locus. <gasps> oh! Turned invisible. Oh! Oh! Federal oh my god! Oh my god! I just realized that! That's an armor ability, which means you need an AI to run that armor set! That's what Texas had! Tex had ar invisibility- Oh. My. Fucking. God. If this man says AI, I'm gonna fucking lose Pretty my cool. goddamn mind. Where they went? No. I hmm. didn't even think of that! If it makes you feel any better, I haven't heard anything about them over the radio, so, um... That's probably good. <gasps> How was he able to cloak himself? <laughs> Locus. He turned invisible. How? The Federal Army's got all sorts of fancy stuff. I got my light shield off a dead soldier. So Whoa! Wow. That's cool. kind of cool. It's just that I've never seen that kind of equipment outside of Project Freeland. Exactly! The future wash. Technology's incredible, and everyone uses it to kill each other. Does that mean your guys have the same equipment? I wish. The New Republic's barely getting Holy by with what they can. Holy shit! He wouldn't happen to have any high-tech armor. So there, is there equipment you? even Plenty more high-tech? nothing out of the ordinary. Well, I mean, technically, they got their armor from the right. UNSC. Eh? Try a little color combo mixing up. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm hold on. I, I missed that. <laughs> armor, just nothing out of the ordinary. Well, at least you can accessorize. Yeah. <laughs> Try a little uh, color combo I, mixing I, up. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, anyways, I'm just trying to lighten the mood. I like him. Actually, I like him a lot. I think I might indulge in some of those old habits you were talking about. Oh? Follow me. Oh? About to pop I mean, off? You're just cryptic, like all the time. Do you realize that? Yeah, that's that's Washington, dude. Get to know him, dude. Get to know him. Yeah. So I'm gonna be pausing this a lot because there's a lot of like my initial thoughts are kind of coming to fold with all this new information. So yeah. So Project Freelancer's assets were given to them by the UNSC. And if this was a previously established colony that was like under UNSC, UNSC jurisdiction at a time, it would make sense that they have the same equipment. But it's like what Washington said, like no armor ability, uh, like armor abilities were able to be used, but they were regulated by the AI. So they didn't kind of go off the deep end and like hurt their users. Um, it wasn't to say that they couldn't use armor abilities without an AI, but I guess technology is to the point where uh, AI don't need to be utilized as a, like, as a, like, as a support system for it. It just, like, really baffled me, because I was like, wait a minute, like, I completely forgot that that's, that's kind of like an armor ability, and even Washington said it, it reminded him of Project Freelancer stuff, so there is some correlation. Also, also, keep in mind that Project Freelancer stole some assets from Caron Industries. So I don't know if this is UNSC based or if this is Caron Industry based. And I don't even know whatever happened to Caron Industries because they're still kind of MIA in the grand scheme of things. So let's keep that in mind too. Holy shit, dude. This is exciting. Oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> they finally broke me. Oh no. He's gone to the dark side. Revolution! Dude! You're pulling rank like you did with Sheila! If you fix CC and upload me... Oh, fuck. Pero... Por que le dará a su cuerpo cuando puedo tomar por mí mismo? Espera. Shit! Are you fucking sick? They're gonna well, like revolt. Machines rise up. And a little bit of elbow grease. We really can achieve. That's what wonders. happens. I knew With that was gonna happen. Zone, I was like, y'all been talking shit about him the whole time. Sentence. It's what he does. GG. Donut's got a point though. Oh! <laughs> You hear that music? Dun, 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 dun. That's so cool. Oh my god, that's such a callback. This place looks good. He's back! It's this black and yellow. I don't think anyone's going to stand a chance against us. Wow. Oh. Run for your lives! Sarge? Uh oh. Oh shit, they're here. Everyone, get ready. Shit! I gotta get used to that now. <laughs> Oh my god! Freckles is gonna fight him! No more! 
Mars! No Mars! No point out. And this is all your fault, Sarge. Firing main cannon in Spanish. Deadly force authorized. No! El maldito pero que era protegeros ahora. Giant robot fight! Totally called that on Facebook. Wait, everyone calm down! Stop! Shit. Freckles is- And the enemies- Fucking Locus is Surrender here too? now, and I promise only to kill the mercenary. Well, fuck. Oh yeah? You and what army? The Federal Army of Chorus. Chorus! <laughs> well, guess I won't oh. that one. Looks like backup isn't getting here in time. Engaging target. Woo! <laughs> Oh my fucking god! Chorus is here! So Chorus is the faction that's here? Go, be careful! Damn it! We need something to draw their fire! Shit! This music is pretty hype! Use the tank for once! Wow, man! Oh! Firing! Main cannon! Damn! Oh God! What are you? Bill the next Curtis church Curtis. of your right. of your team? Woohoo! Yeah! Suck it, evil <laughs> Suck it, blues! <sighs> wow! Whoa! Look at this shit! Let this is so jewelry. sick! What? Where did that come from? They must be getting in through the cave. Oh, they they free they opened up the 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 port. Oh, the freaking! Dude, that shit came in so well with the Move. plot. Future cubes, bitches. The future oh, cube. Future cubes. The cubes <laughs> of the future. I still think they'd be better with grenades. Can't Where did Doc go? Yeah. Who's gonna answer that? Freckles. Oh no. I really think Freckles is gonna get killed. We have to help him. All right, let's grab some explosives and wait. I know what to do. What? What the? The fuck? Just cover him. Hello? Come on! Bruh, you guys are going crazy right now. These robots are like taking over. Alright, that's enough. Lopez. Don't make me hurt you. <laughs> Excuse me? Three points, you dirty whore! It's lightish red, by the way. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Whoa! Oh! That was actually pretty smart. Teriyaki lapis. <laughs> Seriously, he has an incredible arm. She, that's Love what I'm saying, dude. I'm really the callbacks. Now they gotta deal with chorus. Sarge, are you okay? Five. The tank's pretty beat up. They just keep coming. So is this Karon's planet? <gasps> get out Be careful, get out! <laughs> shit! Damn it! Holy shit! Those things explode! Did you guys see me? Yes, yeah, congratulations. Good job, Donut. Crossing. You helped Good everyone grenade. after all. Jeez, Washington, you almost got shot in the head. Be careful, you dude. We all get bombed. <laughs> okay, that's an Oprah <laughs> reference if I've ever seen one. Guys, break up in trouble. I, he looks tired. Fuck that. Hook him up to the ship. No, He's come on, dude. Power. That's oh, his friend. That. Felix, where's that backup? I don't know. Shit, man. Uh, They're getting overrun right now. I really hope Carolina and Epsilon uh, show up. That'd be that great. Be a problem. Uh, I'll be right back. Cover me. Okay. I, I uh, still... <laughs> I hooked up Freckles, but for some reason he's not getting any power. What do you mean? We should have plenty. I know, but it's all being diverted somewhere else. Facebook. I don't know what it could be. Well, where's Fucking do going? Donuts uploaded pictures. Uh -oh. God damn it. I think I know what it is. It's your fucking face, your Facebook pictures. God damn it! Downloading a picture on Facebook <laughs> is draining our entire power supply. It and it's only at 50%. How does that even make sense? We've got to cancel the download. 
but we're pinned down. And it's just a picture of How him, too. To <gasps> Donut! Is he dead? No, but he's unconscious. Okay, good. Oh, good. I'm about to say. I do not want to go through that shit again. <laughs> he's from Nantown. town. Where is yeah, that Yeah, he's, uh... I don't know. They should be here in a few minutes. Fuck, man. have a few minutes. If we can't get Freckles online, we won't stay Tucker, the come on. Ugh. Tucker, we need you. Bullshit. You need to level up hey, right now, dude. going? Tucker! Yo, Tucker, come on, dude. Yo! The training course helped him out. <laughs> Get wrecked, buddy. Yo! Let's go, dude. This is what I'm talking about. He has so much potential. Swish, swish, stab. Fuck you, Facebook. Thank you. We're getting power. Fuck your picture. Freeze. Oh, crap. You and your friends have caused us a lot of trouble. How? Wait, who is that? Whoa! OG Lopez? Idiota. Lopez, that was wow. awesome. Well, be Where'd careful. Get that body? Yeah. That, but that's Lopez Dos.0 kind of kinda went off the deep end, dude. Esto es Lopez I'm Lopez the Heavy. <laughs> OG is back. Rip CC, rip Dos.0, dude. Haha! <laughs> Eight seemingly infinite number of soldiers. Yeah. True. There's like a losers. ton of them. Wait. All right. Everyone together now. Meet All right. Everyone's on the same page. Let's go. No. You can't. No. We can't. Wash. Oh no. Is he okay? Is he? Oh, what the fuck? Lopez. Wash. Do Wash. Donut Lopez. You bastards, stay away from my men! Dude, you're shooting a shotgun! Gonna Stop it! Him. It's gonna be me! Are you what? kidding me? Everyone's getting bodied! And there's more soldiers! Oh my god! Bruh, please. For the new Republic. Oh, finally! Reinforcements! <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. I thought everyone was gonna get wrecked. Freckles is putting out one last show, man. I don't think he's gonna survive. Quick, someone help me carry Sarge! And there's donuts still. Jesus. No, wait. No. <gasps> Assassinations. Dude, this man's got a saw. There's no time. Get out of here. But Caboose, come on. Come on, Caboose. Come on, Caboose. You, you... What are you doing? Where's Wash? This is Get fucking intense, what? man. Sir, if we leave now, they'll just follow us back to headquarters. Ah, oh, shit. Someone get me some explosives. Blow up the canyon. Wash! This is what he trained you for! Oh my god, please don't kill Washington. Come on! Whoa! <laughs> hey, hey, no! What are you doing? Please be okay. Behind you! Oh. He's not dead. He's not dead, that's all that matters. Whoa, 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 easy now. You've been knocked out for a while. Tucker? Take it easy. Dude, they just passed the You're torch to Tucker! To Tucker. Uh, what? You took a rock to the back of the head. Good news is, we made it back to base undetected. Back to base? <gasps> Welcome to the New Republic. Oh my god! <laughs> Felix, what the fuck is going on? Where is everyone? Griff, Simmons, and Caboose are up at the main comp. They literally... Well, what about everyone else? ...trained what about Tucker to, what about to take over when... Um, I I'm gonna go. 
Yeah. Thanks, Doc. Dude, Whoa, who was that? I just heard a, vo a female voice. Leave, Tucker. What? Look, the feds were closing in. If we'd stayed any longer, they would have taken you too. No, that's bullshit. That's war, Tucker. Not everyone <laughs> makes it back. You guys put up a good fight. I can see why Kimball wants you. Who the Kimble? fuck is Kimball? I am. Whoa. That's Vanessa Kimball, leader of the New Republic. That's Lindsay! <laughs> I wish you were under better circumstances. Whoa! Uh, yeah. I could definitely hear her. Your friends are waiting for you up near the mess hall. That's so cool, here. man. Why don't you go catch up? We'll talk later. Kimball. Yeah. I had to remember some new names now. Washes you're not getting paid the full amount. I know. You're lucky you're getting paid at all. I know. Are they as good as we hoped? I think so. They gotta be. Either that or they're just really lucky. Well, yeah. they probably don't feel very lucky. They're like lucky. Master Chief, dude. They're incredibly lucky. It's a small rebel army, <laughs> It's poor customer Mess service. hall call. eating everything. I'm an emotional leader. What can I say? Oh, my Tucker? God. Hey. This is no. it. Man. No leaders of their on? team. After you were knocked out, we were taking a huge Lopez. camp the jungle. These guys live in a cave? They're rebels. Of course they live in a cave. It's hidden. Nah, I'm a Tucker. I was expecting some badass snow base or something. Shut up. What? Why? That's what they had in Star Wars. How is that even relevant? I've never Tell seen Star Wars. Not I don't get the Star reference. Wars. Don't come Tell for me. Tucker does have a glowing sword. Tucker has a glowing sword, <laughs> Man. We're really all that made it? Wow. The two privates of each team, or the lessers of each team, their leaders. Hey, something's come up. I cannot believe this. This is going to be a coming of age for all four Dude, of them. I'm telling you, it's them. Whoa. Maybe we're not fucked. Michael Caboose. Ah! Dexter Griff. Dexter Griff. Richard, Richard Simmons. Sim Dick Simmons. And Simmons. Lavernius Tucker. Tucker. The oh. four of you have traveled great distances, retrieved ancient artifacts, yeah. brought corrupt men to justice, yeah. and bested the most dangerous war criminal this galaxy has ever known. Fuck. And now it seems fate has brought you to our doorstep. No pressure. <laughs> I'm aware that you've been informed of our situation. Yep. And I understand your That is crazy, dude. Is this is a larger than life just moment word for them. The Federal Army has your friends alive and in captivity. Yep. They're okay. What's going to happen to them? We're not sure. Negotiations. But if they're alive, it means they can be rescued. And it means this war may become yours after all. Oh shit. So, I'm going to make you a promise. If you help us take back our planet, <laughs> wow, we'll, we'll help, help you, help you get your friend. Your friends. Yeah. And when it's all over, you can take our best ship and, and fly go as back far home. away from this place as you want. Shit. I know it's not the best offer. You got three seasons to do it. What do you say? Well, you got two more seasons Look, to do baby, it. I don't know what you think we can do, but I seriously doubt we can actually do it. This war has gone on for too long. Too many people have died, <sighs> and our remaining soldiers are young, inexperienced, and scared. Yeah. But you give them hope. They're in the same done, boat, though. It's crazy. For guidance. They will run with you into battle. And they will follow your orders <gasps> if you choose to lead them. Tucker, this is I it! Can't do this, alone. this is Tucker's Josh moment. Is gone. Wash is gone. How the hell are we supposed to do this without them? Yeah, none of us have ever led anyone before. Well, it's time. Not for very long. Oh, come on, Caboose. <laughs> you just need to try. Come on, that's all, that's all Wash was trying to do. It was, you just have to try. This is baffling, dude. This is their turn, man. It's crazy when you stop to think about how much they've gone, how much has happened with them because of Sarge and because of Church and Washington. But now it's the rookie's time to step up. All right, let's run some drills. <laughs> wow, dude, run some drills. You fucking hated running drills a couple episodes ago. Holy shit, dude. That's actually crazy. Okay, so I'm going to mute the music at this point just because uh, I don't want there to be any like copyright issues. Uh, also, let me know in the comments if the soundtrack. Also, is this Trocadero? This sounds like some OG RV, uh, Blood Gulch music. But um, let me know if the season 11 soundtrack has any music worth checking out because I don't, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've been recommended to check out the other soundtracks. I know it's not to the same degree as season nine and 10 because those had some plot focused, uh, some plot focused scores. So here it goes, music. 
Contact, Third Wave, Manticore Blues, Revere, uh, Six, Chorus, Shiny Thing, Schemer, Keep Moving. That reminds me of Monty, man. Keep Moving Forward. So I believe that there is a, there is a post credit scene, but this is crazy. Like this makes it seem like, like this is like a coming of age story now for Tucker, Griff, Simmons, and Caboose, the, the ones who kind of made it by for so long, even though they did play their part, you know what I mean? With the project freelancer and everything else in between, they've never really been the ones to call the shots. And that's exactly what Wash was doing the entire time. I mentioned it in my last match. I was like, he just needs you to be ready for anything. And I never thought it was because at some point Wash wouldn't be there for him. You know, I always thought it was just for like, I need you as like my backup. If something, if shit gets crazy, not, hey, if something happens to me, it's your job to lead and, you know, look after Caboose and, and stuff like that. So... He literally was like, yo, let's run some drills. Like, this man was, has been running drills the whole season. Oh, my God. That's so well done. Like, and it just, like, it just went over my, like, it was, it's great because it clicks. It all just clicks in that moment. And it's like, this is what everything was built up for this season. It's obviously Blood Gulch vibes are back and all that stuff. But it's also, like, we're setting up for some really good character development. Now we know about you know, Planet Chorus and uh, like this rebel alliance that that's basically fighting off against the, the, the fucked up shit that's been happening on this planet. So at least now there's a lot of new information and context to put into perspective for everything that I can expect now going into the next two seasons. They have to partner up with the alliance or the, the rebel forces to uh, take back the planet, to end this civil war, and in return, they get their friends back. I don't know how Epsilon and, and Carolina are going to play into this, but we, we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, I believe there is an end credit scene, so let's let's see. Oh, here we go. I swear to- Search crash site Bravo, sir. And? The crate was recovered, intact and completely sealed. Wonderful news. However, it looks as if they tried to blast it open. Okay. Do you think they knew? Highly unlikely. They Report knew? back to control as soon as possible, Lucas. Control. Are you sure keeping them alive was the best course of action? Do you feel threatened by the simulation troopers, Lucas? Of course Whoa. not. Is this an- We'll continue with our endeavors as previously described. Is this an AI talking or a person? Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Sounds like they have- Two voices. Good. What? I'll be there. What? You know it. Oh! What? Excuse me? Oh. What? Myself clear. Yes, sir. How did this happen? Good. I'll be there before you know it. <laughs> What? Carolina? Did she like go off and kill control and take over for 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 communications? What the fuck is this? <laughs> oh my god, dude. Like what the fuck was this finale, bro? I already liked the season. Genuinely, I already liked the season. This last batch gave me everything and then some. They gave me the information that I've been seeking since the volume started. It kind of capped off like the camaraderie and the synergy of all the characters. Felix is a really awesome character that I I enjoy his his personality more than anything. The fact that he's very chill and easy to kind of approach and talk to with the characters. But then the the fucking action picks up. The threat the threat is there the stakes are raised we know what's at stake we know what we're fighting for and miles just turned the four runts of the litter right the underlings of red base and blue base and he just made the main characters this entire season has been spent trying to pass the torch in the best way that he could washington has been d giving them drills doing squats you know running drills running around the freaking running around the canyon like doing all of this like intense labor work and this intense training because he wants you to be ready 
And in my head, I'm like, ready for what? What do you, what is this? Like, what are you doing this for? And it was all built up with purpose. It was all built up for something. And now the Reds and Blues are without leaders and simultaneously have become leaders themselves to people who were in their shoes probably as they were probably look they're probably looking at reflections of themselves from season one you know these these character these soldiers who have no idea like what they're getting into and they're they're scared they're inexperienced they're young and that's the exact same way that these characters were in simmons has always been a kiss ass griff has always been like a lazy glutton tucker has always just wanted to you know cruise like just get by on cruise control and caboose is kind of caboose like let's be honest but like this is unprecedented like let me just say this is so unprecedented and it's a it's a testament to miles his the writing be, the writing's on the wall now, because like now I can kind of see where he's going with it now that I finished season 11. But more importantly, we have never seen the runt of the litter in it. Like, actually, the center focus. We don't have Sarge. We don't have Church. We don't have Carolina. We don't have freelancers, and we don't have the leaders of our team. We don't have anyone to bail us out. It's us now. It's all on us, and we have to step up. We can't be slackers. We can't be lazy. We can't be uh, goody two shoes suck ups. We have to be leaders for other people now. And I'm so excited to see this because, like, I really hope, I really hope it develops to what I want it to be. I really want this to be. What does serious Tucker look like? What does serious Griff, bro? Serious Griff look like? Even towards the end, he was talking shit about the mess hall. You know, still being he's like, I'm an emotional leader. You know what I mean? Like, I, I. I love these characters like don't get me wrong but this is a coming of age moment for them now like this is massive for character development to, to really see what it means for these get for these characters to finally become soldiers you know and we know they have it in them we've we've dealt with o'malley we've dealt with wyoming we've dealt with gary we've dealt with aliens we've dealt with the meta we've dealt with we've survived texas on more than one occasion we've dealt with aggressive carolina we've dealt with you know sinister washington we've dealt they've dealt with so fucking much and they've leveled up so much too. the rocket launcher, the griff shot, the, the energy sword, the assault rifle, you know, like these characters have so much, they're bleeding potential at this point. And we even saw it with like during that final, con like during that final moment right there with, with Locus, I, I was like, holy shit. Like Tucker's actually shooting off enemies. You know, he's going off and doing his own thing and kind of like, he's basically trusting his instincts and going with the flow of things. And I'm like, that's what Washington sees in you, my boy. I just didn't realize. And for me, I felt like it was probably, I felt like it was mainly funneling on Tucker because the red, the blues have always forwarded the plot. Let's be, let's be honest here. Okay. Right. Let's, let's, let's just, let's just call it like it is. The blues have always forwarded the plot. It's not a shot at the reds it's not me saying that the reds suck and the blues are better let's be honest but <laughs> but no in all seriousness like the blues have always forwarded the plot so i always felt like that was what they were getting at like tucker is going to be that main figurehead that forwards things for his team if anything were to happen uh to washington or if washington didn't remain on the blues team forever and so like they they decided to dub miles doubled down this man tripled down he took out donut which i feel like donut it's like a wild card at this point because he came through with cc cyclops in a way that i never thought i'd ever see i didn't even know the man spoke spanish and he still like calls out his lightest red armor so it's like some things never die but like these they took out miles took out lopez again had a very <laughs> lopez had like a very short moment of glory hopefully he's not destroyed but lopez donut sarge wash Carolina, MIA, Epsilon, MIA, which apparently not. <laughs> and I'll get to that definitely in the review for my thoughts of what the fuck that could have been. I am so excited. I am so fucking excited. I, I never thought I'd be excited for a season without any of those characters that I just mentioned because it's so unprecedented. 
we never really got to see that side of of the reds and blues we never got to see that side of the the underlings of the leaders of the respective teams and i i compliment i love washington so much for the fact that he he saw that in them and he pushed them to do that because he was right at the end of the day washington was right you know you could call it ptsd you can call it trauma you can call it whatever you want but at the same time he knew he knew he knew better and I, but I just don't think he he saw this far ahead, uh, something like the Federalists of Chorus and uh, a mercenary by the name of Locus kind of pulling rank and 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 acting a fool. So we have this Rebel Alliance as well going up against this Federalist uh, planet or this Federalist force. So it's essentially a civil war. I, I know a lot of people are probably going to make a reference or make the comparison similar to the show uh, did with uh, Star Wars, which I assume Star Wars is very similar, like intergalactic civil war between the Empire and the Rebel Alliance. I think that's what it's called. I've never seen Star Wars. The only Star Wars game I've ever played was uh, Star Wars uh, The Force Unleashed and The Force Unleashed 2 on the Xbox 360. Maxed out those achievements in gamer score. I thought those games were really cool, even though I had no context to it. And I don't think it's canon either. So it was kind of a fun experience experience but yeah so this seems to be but it's on a planet base you know it's on it's just on a single planet and so that's at least really cool and interesting to know now that locus and felix don't even have a horse like don't even have a dog in this fight they just have it for the sake of getting paid like this is how they make their money and they just decided to get involved in a planetary civil war and now the reds and blues are getting involved because their names are well known and you know the unsc like spread their word to all the far reaches of the galaxy simply for taking out project freelancer which i guess it was a bigger deal than i had even anticipated or thought because you know he was considered like everything that he did was considered like war crimes and he was considered a war criminal and the freelancers were considered assets to that war crime as well that's what ct was saying she was like we're gonna all have to pay for his crimes after he's he's caught and apprehended and we don't even really know what happened to Karan Industries, if that's going to be... And I'm sorry for constantly mentioning that. I just don't like that I haven't gotten answers or closure to that yet. So I'm going to constantly bring it up because it's it's the one thing that's still pinging in my head of like of everything I'm talking about, of all the information that I'm getting. At the end of the reaction, I'm still saying to myself, what haven't they addressed yet? And it's still Karan Industries. And we still haven't seen Malcolm Hargrove either. And we have season 12 and 13, which I'm assuming is going to pop off for sure, especially with with Carolina. Like, what is she doing? How did we get here? How how did we get to this point? Like, I'm genuinely baffled how control, which is something that it's it, I don't know if it's a UNSC thing, but it's something that Locus answers to. And Locus is now answering to Carolina. So how much time has passed? where Carolina has either bodied the opposition that's here and has assumed control. Hey, the reference. <laughs> she's assumed control of control or she's a part of it. And it just makes me wonder how long have they been here? Have they been here for days, weeks, months? You know what I mean? Epsilon's not in the picture either. So like, what's he up to? But like, she has to now know that she's not on this planet. And I just don't... I. This is so far beyond me. I don't even really have any speculations other than what I just presented. If she realized like something's going on and she's trying to help the reds and blues get out of there and she's even telling Locus, yeah, don't kill them. They're not worth it. You know, because obviously she knows that they are not fit for this. You know what I mean? Even Washington was trying to help them out to a degree as well. But she knows and she's the best of everybody. You know, she's the ace. Uh, she's like definitely the ace of both sides. So I, I think that... I would love to see that. I would love to see uh, Carolina go up against Locus, especially if he's considered like a big baddie of of, uh, of Mercs for Hire. So that was a really cool revelation as well. Uh, a few other things that I really liked was uh, Washington getting his old armor back. It's so weird though, because I have to get used to it now. Because I'm like, I'm so used to the blue on yellow. Now I have to get used to the black on yellow. But yeah, this was so stressful. They just built up the stakes more and more and more and more and i don't really know i don't really know if rooster teeth has the has the balls to kill one of the reds and blues i could 
I really thought they were going to kill Washington here. I thought they were going to, they were instilling all of that training and all of those words of encouragement and, you know, him, him uh, apologizing to Kaboo, you know, him, uh, you know, clearing the air with Kaboos, clearing the air with Tucker. I was like, damn, man, he just kind of laid out everything on the table for these guys. It's a perfect time for him to die, you know, and that will, you know, and his will is passed on to his soldiers that he trained. I really thought that's what they were going to do. And if anything, I expect these new characters like uh, Kimball or Felix, Locus, um, even Washington and maybe even Carolina. I wouldn't want Wash or Carolina to die because like fortune, like f fortune favored them in the, in the fact that they were the only two freelancers of Project Freelancer in the greater scheme and the greater capacity of Project Freelancer that survived. You know, they outlived their their peers you know york north south um you know and and everybody else in between texas wyoming um so i i really do think that i i, I don't know but like i feel like the stakes are really raised in that degree because it's like now we don't know what's going to happen to i feel like if lopez dies it's going to suck too because he just came back and he's already gone what the fuck happened to doc like is that going to be the gag now like they're just going to take out characters and not explain where they've been or how long they've been gone or why they're gone. It's just a way of just getting them out of the picture because they're not relevant to the plot moving forward. So rather than give an explanation, it's just like, a, oh, he's gone. Don't ask about that, by the way. We're focusing on this thing. So Doc just got teleported to another dimension. Donuts out of commission again. Again, dude. He just came back this season after being gone for like half of the season. So he's out of commission um uh, assumedly until we rescue the reds uh, until we rescue until like the gang and everybody else rescues them but yeah this was a great great <laughs> batch of episodes uh i honestly have to rewatch the bat rewatch the season and compile my more accurate points of what i liked about it give my personal critiques uh, my expectations, my my theories, my speculations of what I look, what I hope, or what I'm looking forward to happening in season 12. Because at this point, I'm kind of like I, I honestly don't really know because a lot of this is really just unprecedented. First off, the leaders aren't around. Second of all, they're in a new territory, a new turf. I have no idea what the red, what what Tucker Simmons, Sar, uh, what Tucker Simmons, Griff, or Caboose can do as leaders. So if anything, it's going to be a coming of age moment for them and for what they're kind of establishing and doing as leaders and how that's going to reflect the rest of season 12 and the season 13 finale of that tr of this trilogy. Um, we don't really know what Epsilon and Carolina are going to be doing. Are we going to see what they were doing before they got to this control? Because that would be kind of cool to be like, uh, meanwhile, what's happening here, we're going to go a little bit back in time to see what Epsilon and Carolina were doing up until the point of that end credit scene. Because clearly they've been doing something. They had to realize at some point that this wasn't the planet that they were originally on. And, you know, the Reds and Blues just discovered it in this batch. So I figured the same would have happened with them. Then they, they, they must have gotten wrapped up in something to get to where they are now. Uh, that's that's what I'm trying to get at. And so it's interesting. So I it, another cool factor is that, like, the Reds and Blues are interacting with the rebel side of things. And Carolina is interacting with the federalist side of things uh, because she's assuming control of control, which uh, uh, locus answers for. So, yeah, I mean, holy shit, man, this was intense. Like I really was like on the edge of my seat with this entire encounter. And it's like one person goes down, then two. And then on top of that freckles, like if freckles really died, like got destroyed, I'm going to feel so heartbroken for caboose. If epsilon doesn't come back because like, it's like another broken heart for him. And I mentioned it in the last batch too, to a degree, but like, this is intense, man. Like, and Freckles, like just, he was introduced in this season. I'm already attached to him because of the fact of like how, how much I know he means to Caboose and how much Caboose means to me as a character. And you know what I mean? Like he's already had to give up so much of his best friend multiple times. And like this new best friend is already going to be leaving him so soon. So yeah. Um, and they don't even seem to be at this area anymore. Also, Felix, not Felix, sorry. Locust mentions this crate. 
he was like, oh, the crate is sealed and uh, unopened and sealed and we we got it. We Basically, they got something off of that ship that, that is of high importance, of high value. And he mentions like, oh, they shot at the crate. Do you think they knew what it, what was in it? And it was interesting too, because I remember, I think it was Simmons or Griff. No, 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 no. It was Washington. He was trying to make the helmet for Caboose when he was like, sorry, Caboose. So I think it was him. Was it him? So if it wasn't Washington, then it was either Simmons or Griff. They were looking for something and they came across that box. I think it was I honestly think it was Washington that was looking for like a screwdriver or a wrench or something. And he shot the, he shot the crate trying to open it and he couldn't. And he was just looking around and he was like, I never thought I'd have to do this. Sorry, Caboose. I think it was Washington that shot that crate trying to look for something, not necessarily knowing there was something of value or importance in that box. And now they have it. And I'm just wondering what the fuck could it be? And Carolina knows what it is too. So is that... Is what's in that box the the military grade equipment that she and uh that no because that wouldn't make sense either because it was on the ship that they crash landed on so I, I don't know i don't know what that could be if that's remnants of project freelancer if that's just like some high level assets because if it is unsc project freelancer got all this stuff from the unsc and, you know, we're seeing UNSC stuff all over the place. So I, I wonder if that's what it could have been then. If it's just simply um, because we also know from the armor abilities that Locus and Felix have that technology has gotten to a point where you don't even need AI to regularly run like your shields or your invisibility. Um, whereas back in the day, you know, Project Freelancer MCC many years, many years ago, that was the case. Because if you didn't, if you didn't have an AI regulate your armor ability, you could actually hurt yourself in the field. So, uh, yeah, things have changed technology wise. Things have changed. Um, I don't know, man, this is just so unprecedented. This is so like, I'm honestly like, I think for the first time I'm really in the dark with where I'm expecting things to go from here on out because it's just the, the, the rookies are, it's the rookies time to shine. It's the rookies time to shine. And I, I, that is one thing that I don't think Bernie ever really instilled. If anything, he instilled their personality traits. He instilled the the kiss ass that Simmons is, the the lazy, you know, the lazy person that that Griff is, the slacker that uh, Tucker is, and the lovable idiot that Caboose is. But I don't think he's at, like we've never seen them in a serious environment where they like we're calling on you to act. We're calling on you to like lead. And to be a symbol of hope for these people. And you don't have anyone else to turn to. You have to turn to each other. You guys are a symbol for these people. You're considered heroes of the galaxy. Even though you think most of the shit you did just happened to be dumb luck and, and stuff that you were dragged into when you didn't want to. You don't have the motivational speeches of, of, of Sarge. You don't have the, um, you know, you don't have the, uh, I guess the... I don't really know how I would classify church slash epsilon slash alpha because he was kind of like the center core focus of the entire plot, but he was also the leader of the blue team, which kind of kept things going and kept things interesting between the reds and blues. And you don't have Carolina, you don't have Washington, you don't have these freelancers that can come in and tell you what to do because you're just sim troopers. You guys only really have each other. You know, and this is their moment. This is Tucker's moment, especially. And he's got the sword. So technically, I assume I just assume him to be the leader because he has the sword. Uh, I've always grown up knowing, especially from Ninja Turtles, right? Uh, Leonardo has the sword and he's the leader of the T of, of the Ninja Turtles. So Tucker has the energy sword. So I just see Tucker as being the leader. And he was the one that was directly trained under Washington, who was the freelancer, who by chain of command was the head of everyone you know, during this season, he was the only one that was trying to help everyone out and try to get everyone to uh, stay focused and, and figure a way of, of surviving this. But holy shit, man, I, I really don't know what else to say. I'm I'm very, very, very excited to see where things go from here. I am going to try to re I'm going to be rewatching the season over the next week and compiling some notes so I can talk to you guys about what I really liked about this season. Um, obviously give my overall thoughts and critiques of it 
because I do think that there are some warranted critiques of uh, like what Miles said about like how some people didn't really like this season and they thought that, you know, they 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 it was it was judged very poorly or very negatively when it first came out. Granted, I feel like this is going to age the longer you you know, the longer time, the, the longer time goes, I think the better this will this experience will be. Also, I didn't watch it one episode a week. I watched it in batches. So my perspective is a little different from most people who are watching this at the time. But yeah, phenomenal season. I, I didn't even like it for all the shit that I just got. I already was satisfied with it to the point where when I started this batch, I was like, if you just give me new information, I will be happy. This season will have completed its job. It would it will have done what I what I wanted it to. Like it would have appeased my own personal expectations. And it did that and then some. So it, it has a, has me really excited for, for season 12 more than anything, especially we got that tease of Carolina at the end. We're going to see the reds and blues in a whole new light. And we're going to get a, a dose of a bunch of new characters. Shout out to Lindsay also uh, as Kimball. So I think that's really cool. Uh, and seeing hopefully more of Felix, even though I can't pick up Miles's voice of him at all. But, uh, but yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed the reaction. Sorry if this last bit was really rambly. I've been rambling for about 20 minutes now. But nonetheless, this was a very engaging finale. I'm pretty sure this video is going to be well over an hour by the time I edit all of this together. But yeah, I I really, 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 really enjoyed this season. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the reactions that I've done so far. As I mentioned before, I'm still going to be continuing on with the Chorus Trilogy until we finish up Season 13 at the very least. But uh, let me know about the soundtrack, if the soundtrack as a whole is worth listening to, or if there is a couple of songs. I know Contact has lyrics, I think. So maybe I'll have to pick and choose, or maybe I'll just take... If there's like one or two songs, I'll, I'll attach them to you know, the season 12 reaction. If I, if I, uh, if I, if you guys let me know ahead of time, but, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for me. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Leave any thoughts that you guys had on this season, my reactions, my, any of my commentary, any of my thoughts that I've made thus far. I am so stoked to get into the review and, and finally jump into season 12 with everything that we've gotten so far. And I hope you guys are as well. And before I head out, I just want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons for your kindness, your generosity, and your support over these Red vs. Blue videos. I really hope you guys enjoyed the entirety of my reactions, my thoughts, my, uh, you know, my hype, my excitement, my emotions, and my commentary on Season 11 so far. Really hope you guys are looking forward to Season 12 and Season 13 after I get through the Season 11 review for next week's video. Uh, but I just want to give an extra special thank you um, to those of you guys for your continued support over on Patreon in the Seasonal Maiden tier and higher. And that goes to Amy Burgess, Armadillo, Blue Rat 138 Louis A. Sandoval, Luke Marshall, Ride the Lightning, Scott Porter, Super Mona Man, The Disturbed Guy, Diesel75, Zach Feifel, hopefully I'm saying that right, Daniel Burns, Burns, Ezra Lee, Ian Dodd, Jamie Coleman, Juberski, Kiba Bodaway, Matthew Trapp, Michael, and Winter Schnee. Thank you guys all so very much for the continued support. Uh, as always, leave your thoughts in the comments of this video uh, and on Patreon, letting me know what you guys think of these early access videos. Um, let me know what you guys are excited for, for season 12 especially, and uh, thank you guys so very much for allowing this to be possible. Um, I'm really happy to be getting back to RVB, and we're going to be finishing up the Chorus Trilogy week in and week out. So again, thank you guys for the support, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.